visiting us at Eternal Food Ministry, where we share the bread of life. We not only preach the gospel, but we help those who are in need of food assistance. We help people in emergency food needs from loss of job, death in the family, sickness, in between jobs, delayed paychecks, and other unforeseen circumstances. This is because we believe in providing for the physical to touch the inner hunger. Now, let's join Josephine Zion for the spiritual food on the Bread Broadcast. God bless you. Praise God, praise God, and let the people of God say amen, amen. We praise the name of the Lord who has brought us back together again uh, for this Bible teaching program. Um, I believe you are enjoying your day. Uh, last week it was freezing in Houston, but today it's kind of warm, so we praise God for that. And last week, we started a topic, God's Vine, if you remember. And I said, let's break it into two parts uh, so we don't rush it. So we did part one last week. So today, we're going to finish it up. Uh, so we are doing God's Vine part two today. Uh, but before we start, let's quickly pray. You know the tradition, right? Let's go. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. Thank you, O oh Lord, for bringing us through the week. Thank you, O oh Lord, for bringing us here right now to learn from you. Father, we ask that you open our heart. Give us the grace to receive your word. Let our heart be a good soil for the seed of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So last week, I will quickly have a recap uh, so we can link it to this week's. Last week, we started God's Vine Part 1, and our case study is still the church. And remember, I said we are not here about Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, or Charismatic Church. No. What the Bible talks about the church is the gr a group of people that have been called out of the world system, they've made Jesus their Lord, uh, not only their Savior, but they, they've surrendered uh, the, the control of their lives to Jesus. These are the people that the Bible recognizes as the church. Now, we talked about Jesus being the true vine, as he himself called himself in uh, the Gospel of John, St. John 15, verse 1, where Jesus said, I am the true vine, and the Father is the vine dresser. So we said, uh, going through this lesson, God's vine is like looking for the DNA of the true vine in God's vine. That is God's children, genuine Christians. And uh, that led us into uh, some characteristics of uh, a vine, natural, literal, uh, plant vine, or vine plant. Uh, and we put from agricultural science, uh, put it side by side of the Bible to, to put the spiritual truth together. And uh, we talked about uh, how God equated Israel in the Old Testament as the vine that he pulled out of Egypt and planted in Canaan and, he, and Israel grew and covered the hills and uh, bringing forth fruit. Now translating that to the New uh, Testament believers, uh, people like us, we said we are the spiritual Jews, believe it or not. The Bible says we are the spiritual Jews. Uh, uh, believers in Christ Jesus. So we are God's vine for the New Testament, even as Israel is God's vine in the Old Testament. Now, God has not replaced the church with, uh, uh, God has not replaced Israel with the church. No, uh, that, 
doctrine of replacement is unbiblical and is, is erroneous. Israel is still very much part of God's plan, but when, we, when Jesus comes back, believers, Jewish believers, Messianic uh, believers, who believe in Jesus Christ from the Jewish uh, uh, descent, and we Gentiles who believe Jesus in the New Testament, God will now bring us together, and then the book of Ephesians will be, will, will be fulfilled. Ephesians chapter 2 that says, Through Christ Jesus, he has made one man from every tribes and nations. So we talked about uh, some characteristics uh, last week. Uh, we talked about four, actually. So let's quickly go over them uh, as a refresher course. Um, a, a vine naturally is a self-deciding tree, which means grafting does not work for a sick vine. And uh, the spiritual truth for that is that you cannot say because your spouse is saved, uh, you are saved, or because your parents are pastors, then your heaven is sure. No, if you are not a little baby uh, that you, you don't know right from wrong, uh, if you know right from wrong, if you have come to the age of accountability, you have to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Uh, we, 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 uh, the, the, the bread on the go for that was that to have received Jesus in the heart is to have been revived in the heart. And then I'm trying to quickly rush through this so we can go to, to this lesson. Uh, the second characteristic is that a vine is a living tree, which means uh, they present strong, healthy leaves and stem. Uh, translate that to a New Testament believer, it means you are not forced to come to church. You are not, you are not prodded uh, to attend the ladies' fellowship or the men's fellowship. Uh, that means you are living, your faith is alive. And the, the, the bread on the go for that, that's the little thing with which I finish my, my point. Um, we call it bread on the go. Uh, that one says, a faith working Christian is a faith living Christian. Then we talked about uh, the third characteristic, which says uh, a vine is a climbing tree. Now, translate that to spiritual uh, implication. It means if you are a genuine Christian that has the DNA of Jesus in you, you will be growing in your Christian faith. Now, that doesn't mean you are going to be perfect. Uh, <laughs> forget about that. I'm not. You're not going to be, okay? Uh, but what you used to struggle with, maybe you used to struggle with lying or you used to struggle with lust, or you used to struggle with fighting and you get angry quickly um, the Holy Spirit will be working in you every day and those stuff will be chipping off of you uh, and you become more like more like Jesus every day every day that means you are growing and the bread on the go for that says a growing Christian life is a glowing Christian life because everybody, they, they can testify that truly you are changing. So uh, the last one that we talked about uh, last week uh, was that a vine is an enduring tree. Naturally, yes. And spiritually, that is very true. Uh, because by the power of the Holy Spirit, you don't get uh, broken off or you, you don't get... Um, uh, discouraged to say you are you are walking away from jesus the holy spirit helps you to be committed at heart so a personal pain or public persecution won't be strong enough to break your faith to for you to say that's it i'm not serving jesus anymore that's one of the characteristics of true vines that have taken the dna of jesus and the bread on the go for that, I forgot to give you this one last week, uh, is, it says to endure affliction is to be sure of salvation. To endure affliction is to be sure of salvation. 
because you know as a child of God, this is the worst life we can live here. As soon as we are out of this place, we are home oh, glory bound, okay? So we thank God for that. So today, let's go straight into God's vine part two. Now, we have done four uh, characteristics last week, a self-deciding tree, a living tree, a climbing tree, and an enduring tree. Today, we are talking about a true vine being a sprawling tree. Sprawling. Remember the definition. They grow horizontally and climb vertically. Remember? So, pulling again from Karen Myers, um, she, I would like to quote Karen Myers again. Quote, be aware that vines are attributed common names like climbing and creeping for a good reason. Their growth habits make them naturally, are you ready for this? Invasive. You see, end of quote. What does that tell you? God's vine, as a believer in Christ Jesus, is someone who cannot help but preach the good news of Jesus Christ to everyone they encounter. You don't plan it, but it's like the Holy Spirit in you can't just, no, you can't just help yourself. It's like you found the cure for spiritual sickness. And really, Jesus is the cure for every spiritual sickness. And you can't just keep it to yourself. So when you meet people, it's so natural to you as, as, as a child of God, indwelled by the Holy Spirit, um, as you say hi to people, you're looking for the opportunity. You're waiting for them to say, oh, I'm, I'm just tired of everything. And then you go, oh, what's going on? And from there, you begin to introduce the cure Jesus Christ. To them, you can't just help yourself because you are meant to be a sprawling tree. Let's go to the book of Mark. The book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15. And it says, And then he, Jesus, told them, the disciples, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. You see? And remember, Jesus taught with authority. He, 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 he. So when he said, go and preach to all the nations, the good news is a command, is an authority. There's an authority, divine authority that came over that statement. And that is why as a child of God, if you are blood washed and indwelled by the Holy Spirit, you can't just help yourself. You invade the space you come in. That doesn't mean you stand in the face of people and you want to force them to listen to the word of God. No, the Holy Spirit will be giving you the wisdom to know when to bring in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, it's because you are not planning it, but the authority of the word of God is in you and you can just do otherwise. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 1. Romans 1, 16. The book of Romans chapter 1, 16. This is Apostle Paul speaking. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek or to the Gentiles. You see, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ is power unto us. Unto those who have believed Jesus, in, uh, Jesus Christ as their Lord, unto those who have made him the Lord of their lives, it's power. There is a power that goes with it. So you can't just help yourself. I, I, I think I was sharing with you a couple of weeks back. I was sick, uh, but I had to come here to do this program. Guess what? The moment we uh, prayed before we, we opened the set uh, for, uh, for, for the program to start, I'm telling you, every symptom that was I was struggling with before I came, boom, out of the window. I'm telling you, there's power in the gospel, you see? So when we just open our mouth and want 
to confess Jesus, to witness, to let people know what he has done for us. I mean, we, the power of the gospel rises up in you because that's what it's meant to do. So if you are ashamed to preach the gospel of Jesus, and I'm not asking you to, to hold your Bible and go, hey, Psalm 18. No, no, that's not what I'm asking you. Jesus said, go and be my witnesses. You are telling people what Jesus has done for you. You are telling them of your personal experience. Nobody can argue that with you because that's your experience. Now, if you are so ashamed that you can't even talk about what Jesus has done for you, there's a problem. There's a problem. You want to go to God and say, Father, what is going on with my spiritual life? If it's the attack of the enemy, the Lord will deliver you. But if it's because you think going to church, being religious, is the same thing as being saved, the Holy Spirit will let you know the truth. And that will be your choice to now decide if you want to be honest with your Christianity. So to spread the gospel is to spread the God's pearl. Remember the pearly gate in heaven? That's the gospel, folks. That is so expensive to Jesus. Jesus is, I like to tell people, Jesus is, is known for one business. He's in the business of soul winning. If you can be a soul winner, there's nothing you do for God that's pleasing to him. No. Jesus is in the business of soul winning, of telling others what he has done for you. Because that's what he's done for us. Okay? Amen. Moving on. A, a vine is a water res reserving tree. A natural vine. This is amazing. Can't you see? A nat natural stuff with so much spiritual truth. A vine is a water reserving tree. I got this uh, um, scientific fact from a garden from the website of How to Garden. Quote, vines have larger water conducting vessels in their stems than those of many other plants, ensuring survival in times of drought, end of quote. Wow, isn't that something? A vine Christian has a large reservoir of God's word in his or her heart because he or she does not joke with God's word. They study God's word daily. This helps in good times and in bad times. I'm yet to meet a Christian to testify that uh, when their car started skin of, skidding off the road, uh, they grabbed their, 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 their Bible and they began to open to the book of uh, James or book, I don't know, whatever, uh, book of Zechariah or something. Uh-uh, because you don't have time for that. When an accident is about to happen or something just happens suddenly, you don't have time to say, uh, let me check my Bible. Uh, no. What happens? What you have in your heart, in the reservoir of your heart, the word is what you bring out. And it becomes a sword. It becomes a weapon at that moment. Look at Jesus Christ. A perfect example. Huh? Look at him. When the devil came to tempt him, did you read in your Bible that Jesus said, bring me the scrolls and let me read from the Torah? No, he didn't have time. There was no time for that. But the Bible tells us that Jesus at the age of 12 was reasoning in the temple with the marketing marks of the, of the temple. He, was, he, he started learning. Jesus read the Torah from the book of Isaiah. He, he, he read the Old Testament in, in one of the church services, if you can put it in a language. So that shows us that Jesus re read the, uh, the Bible, of the, the scrolls of their time, that we now call the Bible, you see. So when the devil came to tempt him three times, he just pulled out of what he had, what he had read from the book of Deuteronomy, that shall not tempt the Lord your God. You see? And he, he gave it back to the devil. So if you are a child of God, you have to learn to hide the word of God in your heart. 
because the word becomes your sword in time of trouble. Psalm 119 verse 11, verse 119 verse 11. Thy word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against thee. You see, the word of God will keep you from sinning. I can't remember who said it now. I believe it's Charles Spurgeon that uh, he, he, the sin will keep you from reading the word of God. Uh, but reading the word of God will keep you from sin, you see. Let's read 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. 2 Timothy 4, 13. When you come, this is Apostle Paul speaking, um, sending a note to Timothy, his spiritual son. It says, when you come, be sure to bring the coat I left with Carpus at Troas. Also, bring my books, especially the parchments. The parchments are like papers, but they are not just any papers. These are the scrolls, Bible scrolls from the old time. He said, listen, if you come in, bring my books. Because he was in prison, so he, he couldn't stay without the word of God. So let the word of God be a, 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 have a place, a reservoir in your heart because you're going to need it. Just like I need it every day. So to reserve God's word in the heart is to prepare God's sword in the hand. Let me say that again. To reserve God's word in your heart is to prepare God's sword in your hand. Remember that. Now, we have talked about all these characteristics of a natural vine and as it plays out in the spiritual, that is a self-deciding tree, uh, it, it's a living tree, it's a climbing tree, it's a sprawling tree, a water-reserving tree, um, uh, I hope I've not missed anyone, uh, it's an enduring tree, you see. We've talked about all that, but do you know the Bible says that even Satan has his angels and they masquerade as angels of light. Do you know, I've met some, some people like that. They are so, um, uh, they are, they are, they've mastered the art, A-R-T, of presenting themselves as Christians. I'm telling you, they will give you Bible, oh my goodness, Bible quotations left, right, and center. And they, they will come to church and do all kinds of stuff. You will be fooled that they are actually genuine children of God. If the Holy Spirit doesn't tell you. You see? So, anybody can still show all those signs. But our God is so wise, isn't it? There is one characteristic that is left. That it doesn't matter how somebody is good at lying, at deceiving body of Christ, children of God, they cannot, they cannot deceive their way into doing this. And that brings us to the last characteristic. Other vines may exhibit many of the characteristics already discussed. Remember the scrambler Christians from last week? But there's one incontrovertible difference through which God's vine that has the DNA of the true vine can be identified from other fake vines and this is it you want to listen okay let's go a true vine this is how you will know is a yielding tree let me say that again of god's vine a genuine child of god that has the dna of jesus christ who is the true vine is a yielding tree that is they produce not all vines produce fruit. Mm -mm. Some produce sour and bad fruit. God's vine is so by the evidence of Jesus-like fruit that they produce. You see? The importance and the prestige attached to a fruitful vine tree have nothing to do with its size since there are bigger trees in the world. However, Importance is attached to a fruitful vine tree because of its product. A genuine believer consistently, consistently 
touches the lives of others around them, by the good fruit of godly behaviors, they are able to bring forth with the help of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do it on our own, folks. We don't have the power. No. All we know was what Adam passed down to us, but the Holy Spirit is the one helping us to do things differently, you see. Thus bringing glory to the owner of the church, the true vine, Jesus Christ, you see. All we knew was, you, 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 do evil, you do something bad to me, I'll do it to you. You slap me, I slap you. That's it. But when the Holy Spirit moves into your life, it changes. Somebody slaps you and you're like, hmm, and the Holy Spirit says, uh-uh. You've been forgiven. You have to forgive. And you say, okay, Lord, I give that slap to you. I forgive that person. You see, the Holy Spirit helps us to produce this fruit. So if somebody is around you and you are kind of confused because they have all these big titles of Christian titles and they speak in some different language when they are praying and you are looking like, okay, and they, 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 they speak the Bible and all that, but some things are coming off of their behaviors, it doesn't just make sense. Look, they can't copy the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Let's go into the book of Galatians, chapter 5. And I want you to write this down. I want you to go study it, please. Galatians 5, 22, and the, uh, verse 23. It says, listen. But the fruit of the Spirit, that is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, is love, joy, peace, Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. You see, I'm yet to see a law in the United States that says you cannot love people. No, there's no law against that. You see, there's no law that says you cannot have joy or you cannot live in peace with people. You see. This fruit is just one, and it starts from love. Some people, they call themselves Christians, and they say God hates uh, um, gays or homosexuals. God hates prostitutes. Hey, listen, I don't know what Bible you are reading. If God doesn't hate a liar and a murderer, then God will not single out uh, homosexuals. No. We've all sinned. Sin is sin, but the consequences are different when you're looking at the consequences. But to say God hates one sin and yeah, one sin is... No, 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 no. Uh -uh. And it doesn't matter if you are watching me. It doesn't matter what kind of sin you are living in. If you are tired of living that horrible lifestyle, listen. Jesus is ready to, that's why he came, okay? He didn't come for, for holy people. He, we, none of us was holy, okay? But when we give our lives to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes in and he begins to make us holy. So don't, don't, don't be turned off by, by, by what you've heard from some, from some people that Jesus hates these people and hates that people. You're a Muslim. Come on. Jesus died for you. He loves you, Okay? Don't, don't go away. He loves you. So, if you are a believer and you, 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 are, you are confused, I hope now you are no longer confused. If you don't see that fruit of the Spirit in the life of those that call themselves believers, that doesn't mean you'll be doing it perfectly all the time. But that uh, fruit of the Spirit will be coming out of your life every day you come in contact with people because we all have our bad days but nevertheless you will still show this fruit of the spirit because it's from the holy spirit helping you to do that now if you call yourself a child of god and you are nasty to people you nag you fight with everybody and in your workplace if we should go to your family, they will, they will roll their eyes. If you call you a Christian, listen now. God cannot be mocked. You need to fall on your face and ask God to help you and save you. Because he will. He will save you. Okay? 
But stop deceiving yourself, saying you're a Christian and your life is not attracting people to Jesus. Uh-uh. That's not what the Bible t uh, uh, teaches us. No. So you want to now go back and check yourself on the spectrum. I'm checking myself too. Okay? I pray God will help you. Even as I'm praying that God will also help me. To be God-pleasing in art, A-R-T, is to be so winning in act, A-C-T. Let me say that again. To be God-pleasing in art is to be so winning in act. As a child of God, as a yielding tree, your life should win souls to Jesus Christ. So we finished everything uh, concerning God's vine, that is a vine that has the DNA of the true vine. It's a self-deciding tree, is a living tree, a climbing tree, an enduring tree, a sprawling tree, a water-reserving tree, and a yielding tree. Now, I've talked about people who have not made Jesus their Lord. If you are one of those, listen. It will be such a disaster. I mean, at, at every level that you should come to this world and die without Jesus. You don't know what's going to happen. About four hours ago, I, 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 I read about a, a pastor that died. I, I mean, I jumped off when I read it. I'm like, what? Just like that? Yesterday, he, he was still alive. And today, he's gone. That's life. So if you, if you are saying, uh, I don't know much about this Jesus, listen, you don't need to know much. But do you want to spend your life in eternity with Jesus where there is no more pain or stress or worry? Then, listen, all you have to do is say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need help. That's what I did. And he saved me. If you are ready to do that, Click on the right, uh, on the left-hand corner, top left-hand corner of this screen, and it will take you to a page called Want to Know Jesus page. And we will meet you there uh, because we cannot go through uh, all that here because we have limited time. But listen, if you are willing to walk through the door of salvation, it's open to you. And I pray that you walk through because you have nothing to lose but everything to gain, including your soul and your eternity. Thank you, Father Lord Jesus. Brethren, before I let you go, let us pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, you have spoken to us using a natural plant, the vine. Oh Lord, we ask that by your spirit, you will help us to pay a careful attention to the details of our Christianity, to always check ourselves if we are still in the faith and to keep ourselves pure from the idols of this world. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, I will see you next week only if Jesus has not split the sky open.